I am unashamed. What about you? All right, welcome back to Unashamed. We really enjoyed our last podcast. Thank you did well by bringing in Frank Turek. He was that was a good call. I guarantee you. He he well, fit our, he fit the unashamed audience. And I'm a big fan of Frank. I just I was so stunned when he brought out the Hollywood heroes. He wrote that book. I knew you were going to like that. When I saw that book title, I thought Jason's you know, going to like that. So what's funny is after he did that, because I browsed through the book and saw he had used the same analogies I saw. Yeah, Iron Mar- Man, uh, Marvel, Wonder, yep. Wonder Woman. They all have these supernatural qualities that show a hint of sacrifice. You know, they're going to sacrifice themselves yep. for the good of others, but they're imperishable, so they can't die. I'm like, yep, sounds familiar. So then I said, have you ever thought about writing another book on retail? And he was like, what do you mean retail? So I brought up my bit about the toilet paper controversy, you know. I said, you know, angel soft toilet paper. He's like, I'm not following you. I said, how (laughs) did the creators of that toilet paper know the degree of the celestial softness Therefore, they could name their toilet paper Angel Soft. Are they doing that because they believe in the celestial beings? Or are they using that principle? Who doesn't love angels as long as they're friendly? To sell toilet paper. So then I said one of their competitors noticed that. So they came up with the eternal role. I think it's Charmin that does that. So... I know it's, there was it's a, as big as a wagon wheel. I'm saying it's not eternal. They just used the name. Right. I noticed, Chase, there was a story out last week that I, I think it started with some environmentalists, but uh, basically they're trying to get rid of toilet paper in America. Mm-hmm. And so they're wanting everybody to go to the bidet um, toilet seats where everything is done sans toilet paper to water cleaning now. Yeah, it's making me nauseous hell. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm no, just I'm saying just, it's a yeah. thing which— No, they're doing that with everything. It's like now some places have the straw. It's made of paper. Right. But it is but it wilts literally in, perishable. Yeah, yeah it wilts in time, your glass. You can't even finish your glass. By the time you're drinking the last bits of your tea with the new straw, you're ingesting— <laughs> the paper fragments of the straw in with your tea. Yeah. It's a dissol- dissolvable straw that dissolves in the bowel tract. And then you're looking for some angel <laughs> Bad <soft>. idea. <laughs> so, so, That's more satanic <laughs> salt. <laughs> I made that connection for you. But I, so he was enamored by, by my itch. He's like, you know, I never have thought about it. I was like, I mean, forever 21, right? And he's like, do what? I was like, it was a brand of clothes. They're, they went bankrupt. But the people that I know, and, like... And he wasn't laughing. I was like, yeah, he, he you're, not, you're not getting the concept. He, he How could a company one. called Forever 21 go bankrupt? He's like, oh, I get what you're saying. <laughs> like, it was all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lie to take your money. And so they, they use it in advertising. They use it in the movies. They do all that. And then if you actually say, look, we actually have a being that is imperishable, and he will save you forever. His nickname is I Am. They're like, mm. oh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, well, you use all his principles in making a living. Yeah. You, you sell those principles. Yep. So tell me whose side is better. That's true. No, it's true. It's it's a fact. You you you. It would kill the the Hollywood industry if they couldn't make movies surrounding good and evil, or the imperishable, or the impossible. You couldn't do it. But if they go to the bidet, it'll end your it'll end your problem with them because there'll be no more need for angel so. Well, I would be fair with that, but I guarantee you they're fighting it. <laughs> My problem is that so so your sister has one. They swear by it. Now Anna has, my daughter has one. They swear by it. That's what? The, you're back on the commode? The bidet, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so Lisa bought one, had it put onto our commode lid, but I'm afraid to use it. 
It, it I think that's a fair assessment. Me. You know why you're afraid of that? I'm afraid. We of were it. raised in a culture where one of the one of the things right after the birds and the bees talk, Phil will remember this. I think I was eight when he gave that, and uh, it never left my brain. He also set out all the leaves in a ranking <laughs> order of when an emergency happens. Yeah, what would be the best leaf? For and the usage? ones you want to avoid for sure. The yeah, oh, he had those. Plant. Yeah, had those. You remember that, Phil? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Phil's an expert in using leaves in ways you've never. I think seen. I may be too old to try the bidet because I've been doing it for the same way for. I only bring that up because, <laughs> in a moment of crisis, when the urge hits you, sometimes you you, you can't go very far until you got uh-huh. big problems uh-huh. down your yeah. britches and legs. <laughs> So it's best to know the type tree and to move swiftly as you can. Yeah, you told us you did. <laughs> I told you. You did. <laughs> this is a weird wow. segue into going into. You I don't want to walk down through the woods and <laughs> think, 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 think you're single handed. You can't. You can't be, do it. Be, yeah, be careful with the leaves that have vines on them. That's your segue, right? Well, there. the oh, yeah, poison yeah. ivy is real. Yeah, it's real. You don't want to go there. And poison you, oak, you and uh, they got one up here called um, poison sumac. That Max got into when we first moved here, and you want to talk about just oh yeah. I mean, his first day at school, his his face, and every, well, everywhere. I won't say. I mean, it, it got everywhere. Mm. Well, what quite, I didn't know until until in my marriage life that this stuff is transferable, even if you're not allergic. So oh, you like, pass what? it on. Oh yeah. Well, you notice how I said that. I didn't notice that till my married life. I mean, <laughs> I spent a day in the woods, and then I got home. You know. Oh boy. And, do what married people do, and the next morning it's mm. like, "What have you done to me?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you fill in the blanks. Oh boy! Yeah, poison <laughs> ivy is transferable. I never did go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'm, I'm just saying, play it safe because there are some things you don't want to. Uh, want I, to can, clean I can't even eye. see Maddie, but I can I'm feel not, her glowing from no, over. Yeah, I'm not joking. It's it's transferable. <laughs> It's a human uh, contact. Yeah. So if you and your wife had date night and you'd been in the woods and had poison ivy, she wherever your hands go or where, you know, mm. it, it's... You just think about it when you go back in time before all these latest inventions, when it came down to your members of certain Indian tribes, you're in the middle of nowhere, there's not a lot of trees. There's not a lot of... There's no paper, no no leaves. It's it's pretty well dust and rock. Well, in some parts of the country, that was probably the that was probably the reason. I'm for not move. sure how they managed all that, but I mean, <laughs> they moved to where there were some trees. It had to have been a trick to it, because, because that that would have been rude today or 200 years ago. Mm. You know? Yeah, could have been the wow. Maybe the early, the streams could have been the early bidets, I yep. guess. Yep. That's, no, that's, that's I correct. think so. Yep. There's something there. How, how, how do we, uh, how do we get in on this again? I don't know. I don't know. This, no idea. This day is started I, with this angel soft thing. It just took me down that road. Well, I mean, we're, I mean, there's metaphors in the Bible and we're in the I am series. And I was just yeah. thinking of the many things we use from trees. I mean, there's a, there's a paper plant just up the way. I actually, you can smell it if you drive by it. And oh, that no, I just thought about that. So I figured out why, because I'm traveling a lot back and forth into Monroe. Because y'all don't ever leave. Well, you do a little bit. So I don't ever leave. I'm gone all the well, time. Well, you are now. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But you before you were. So I figured out, because, you know, Rustin is getting a Bucky's. Did you know that, Jess? I don't know what that. White. I don't know what that is. Bucky's. Bucky's. Oh yeah, I know what a Bucky's. Yeah, is. Bucky's the, uh, is like a convenience store on steroids. It's, it's like it's like a it's like Super uh, Walmart. Oh, what I've Super seen Walmart this. did. To, yeah, it's 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 a. Uh, it was quite, quite the, the spectacle. It's well, quite the spectacle. Have you seen a, one, Jays? Oh, Bucky's. I've seen it from a distance, and yeah. here's why: if you're a recognizable human <laughs> being, you don't want to go there. I stay away from where. People gather just well, because, not that I don't love people, because I do. It's like why put yourself well, in a situation if you're on a on a trip or yeah. travel? Because when I went to- once, and not even a, even about that, about being recognized, but just just the traffic and getting in and out of it is. I mean, it's a, it's a convenience store that's that's the size of a super Walmart, 
It's unbelievable. But it's a cool concept. But anyway, so they're put they're they're putting one in Rusta. And so everybody's like, oh man, why didn't we get one in, you know, West Monroe instead of Rustin? But I figured it out. So if you're coming into you're coming into Monroe on I-20, and the first thing, just as you're entering into town, they now have the landfill out there. They put these little gas deals in it out there, and it's right on I-20. So for about a mile stretch, they're venting gas off of our landfill, and it's settling into that area right around I-20. And it's the most putrid, terrible smell that I that you can imagine. It's worse than the it's paper just mill. straight methane. Oh, it's just it's worse than the paper mill. It's awful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's bad. So I'm saying this. So you're coming. You're, oh, Monroe, Louisiana. I've heard about that. That's where the dynasty guys were coming about. And then you're gagging for a yeah. mile, and you can't even hold your breath that long. So the moral of the story is, if you come through that stretch now, hold your hold nose. your breath. When you see the sign that it's says like the tunnel game, you know that's right. Millhaven, when you see the so all those of you coming in, when you see Millhaven, start holding your breath and don't let go again till you hit the mall. If if you don't pass out, you're good. But here's why we didn't get a Bucky's. So that yeah, once hit, you get to, once you get to the Red Lobster, you're you're good. Red Lobster, you you're get, good. You have to make it. To so the, then you. But, but, the but here's lobster. the problem, though. That so you catch your breath and you're like, whoo, that was rank. And then you hit the Washtenaw River and you thought, well, this is a pretty river. And then you take another big deep breath. And then the paper mill hits you, to your point, Jason. Yeah. They're making the paper. They're all that. Well, it's a sulfur smell, and we're used to it. But still, it's it's pretty rank, especially at a certain time of day, the week. Well, our, our friends that work there, they they, they they always told me that that smells like money. Right. That's what that smells well, that's like. That's what I home. said to my lovely wife when I was in the fishing industry. She that's said, right. Man, you stink. I said, smells like money, money. today. So here's Bill my theory. Here's my theory. So somebody's coming through. And they've had this experience of the landfill. Then they get the double whammy of the mill. And so they're thinking, do I stop here in West Monroe or not? And they're like, no, nope, I'm going to keep going until I get to Rustin. That's why Rustin got the Bucky's. Well, I'm thankful that's, now. That's why we didn't get the Bucky's. Y'all brought the that up. I'm thankful now that uh, as of about a couple of years ago, I have lost all, every bit, 100% smell. I can't, can't smell anything. Can't smell anything. I mean, the house could be on fire on one end and be burning up and the smoke coming. That might have happened. If, did you ever get COVID? No. You, you're not sure that you did. I, I don't know whether I got it or not. But yeah. I mean, I mean I, I'm just you, in a position well, they, where I cannot smell anything. Some people lose their taste and smell. Yeah. I can taste. You can taste, but you can't smell. Can't smell. But that so. would knock out me smelling anything coming in on Interstate 20 or where. I wouldn't smell that at all. I wonder if we could put some giant, you know those things that hang in your car, the little pine freshener? Maybe we could put some giant ones of those along I-20 there. Yeah, we need to do something. Maybe we could look into that. You think, Zach, a is community that project. Yeah, just like some giant uh, air fresheners right along I-20 there to combat that. We get some of our engineer friends working on that. We need some redneck ingenuity. Yeah. It's not a bad plan. Jace, how important is it to have a clean barrel when you're hunting? It is a necessity. Got to have it, right? You want full production. Having a, any kind of weapon, especially that's going to contribute to having a meal later on that evening, you want it functioning at the highest level possible. So we got a brand new sponsor on our show that uh, we're super excited about. They're called Barrel Buddy. Uh, and they focus on clean, making sure you got a clean gun barrel. And uh, they're different because, you know, in the old days, it was the patches, the rope. You know, I've no, used No, it was like a paper towel, and you shove it down through your barrel with a stick. Right, that exactly. That was what it was in the beginning. <laughs> that's right. In fact, Zach, when we talked to these guys originally, that's what they did, right? These guys are from Michigan, and they were explaining to us, it's very similar to what Jace described. They're out there, it's raining, they're trying to get the stuff out of their gun barrel. Yeah. And it was kind of that tissue same. Paper. Yeah, tissue paper, uh, basically toilet paper. They're trying to clean, you know, the gunk that's in their gun barrel. And they were like, you know, something could be better. You know, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. Yeah. And which related to me because I was thinking, Dad, is what I told them. That's how we came up with duck call read system was because out in the field, when you need it, 
you, that's usually when you come up with an invention, right? That's when you come up with something that'll work. Yep. And so that's what these guys did. So they uh, they evenly apply the solvents uh, and oils with no waste. There's no dripping. There's no mess. Uh, they have white polymer, which allows you to see the cleaning results. Because the problem was with the old ropes, you would take them through, and they you know they were kind of that dark color, and so you couldn't really tell whether you were getting the residue off your gun or not. Uh, they don't shed lint or fibers. They don't decompose, so they don't leave anything behind. Uh, they fit any barrel size from 22 to 10 gauge, which is excellent. Um, safely used with commercial solvents and oils. You can use it dry as well, uh, quick clean. So, and they're American made, uh, which we love. And yeah. so, and we like the guys. Right? And, and, and yeah, and how? And, and I'll tell our audience how they how they began our call when they were first telling us about the product. See so, yeah, they said, hey guys, uh, could we open with a prayer? Because that's how we like to do business. I was like, I think we're going to like these guys. Uh, and, and we do. So they're obviously believers. Uh, so good guys, uh, guys at Barrel Buddy. So if you want to check them out, uh, they got a great product. It works well. Uh, it's an important step. As Jay said, you got to have a clean weapon. You got to have a clean barrel. I guarantee you'll love them. Go to Barrel Buddy, B A R R E L Buddy, B U D D Y, BarrelBuddy.com today. BarrelBuddy.com. Check them out. All right, so so Jace, we it feels like we've had a lot of guests on here lately. So we 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 have never finished up our I Am series. I've heard a lot of good things because I've been on the road, right? And I uh, speaking. Can of, you tell us about any of your road? I know you're filming, so you're like sworn to see. You know, uh, can I tell you anything of my adventures? Not really, but when one of these days, one of these days, what a, what one a, of these what if, days. What a phrase that is. We only have so many days that you're on the earth. Certain number of days. Certain number of days. Well, there'll be a day coming when all of a sudden you're going to see where I've been. Yep. And you're going to think, oh, (laughs) boy, once once that dam breaks, (laughs) there's going to be shows. (laughs) Because you're wondering, where? how did Jace, where... How could he have done? He's all like that? he's Johnny Cash. He's been everywhere. Yeah, I have been all over the United States of America the past few months. Mm-hmm. Just and it's all run together into a big mush in my brain. So it's very hard to comment on. But I'm I feel pretty good about it. I think. What is we, your What is your general take of people? Because now you've had you've experienced them in different states, yep. different cultures, you know, different ways of eating and you know, experiencing life. What's your What's your take now? You've got you're, you're I, kind of experiencing life across the fruit plains. The most humble thing that's happened to me is I'm surprised at how many people are listening to this podcast because that's the number one thing. I mean, I'll tell you one story. So. Me and uh, the producer are driving behind my wife and Miss Kay, which is kind of weird. But, and we stopped at a Chick fil A. So I'm in line because everybody's taking turns because we're going, we're going to eat something, but we're also going to the bathroom. So I'm like, I'm in line. The producer's, you know, in the bathroom. So she comes out. I was like, okay, here's your spot in line. But this guy says, hey, let me ask you something. Yeah. He said, uh, Anybody ever told you you look like that guy on that duck show? I said, I get that all the time. <laughs> He's like, I figured you would, because I'm telling you, you are the spitting image of one of those guys. I was like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so I did, I just let it go. And so the producer, she was like, you're not going to leave that there, are you? I was like, should I tell him? <laughs> So I said, okay, I'll tell you. So I was like, well, I am one of the guys. I'm Jace. And he's like, no, <laughs> no. But you look like him, <laughs> but you're not him. <laughs> you can't fool me. <laughs> and I said, well, come on, let's take a picture and document this. He's like, why would I want to do that? <laughs> I don't want to take a picture with the impersonator <laughs> of a guy. <laughs> and so then the person behind him said, you're wrong. He it, that's him. And they so they're showing pictures of each other uh, of me to each other on their phones, 
in front of me. All they're going to the internet for the truth. Oh yeah, and they're looking at me, looking back at their phone, and he's like, "You know what? I think that is you." <laughs> it's the strangest, bizarre. But he said, uh, "He said, but I listen to this guy's podcast. I, that's why I know it's not you." <laughs> <laughs> and the guy I'm listening to tells these tales that can't be true. It's, so just, it's the yeah. first time in my life I was like, look, I beg you, <laughs> take a picture with me just in case I am well, right. Well, he, he'll validate it now that you, you validated it for him. And he's going to listen to yeah. this podcast right now. And be well, right, like, he's going to hear and say, they, that's, they're talking about me. That, <laughs> I love it to bust people, Jay, so they see me because I look a lot different than my earlier pictures of pr promotional stuff. I didn't have a beard. I was thinner. And so somebody will come up and they're not sure. And usually they hear me talk and they get it from my voice. And they're like, are you, are you Al? I said, well, I'm what's left of him. And so then they go to, they say, well, can we take a picture? And I said, yeah. And then, so when they, they turn their phone on, cause it's gone to blank screen. When they turn it on, there's a picture of me and Lisa on the phone <laughs> where they've looked us up on the internet. Cause they're trying to mm -hmm. figure out if it's you before they come and ask you, but then they still don't know. Cause in the picture, you know, it doesn't look like you. So that's, what's funny. Then you, when you kind of bust them, when they're trying to figure it out, if it's really who you are. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, the oh Zach, you could have just told me that. <laughs> Zach sent me a message. I think that's the first time you've ever sent me a message while we're he talking. He says it to me all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> tell Jace to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But uh He went to everybody except for Phil because he doesn't have a cell phone. So yeah. I just sent it to the unashamed group text. So Zach <laughs> and y'all are wondering why, drop why, out why I minute. don't have one. <laughs> this is why. But, so, Phil, you're one of the few people that actually would not be offended if someone sent a text in a group text setting and you didn't get it. That's right. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> so if Zach leaves unexpectedly, which is all the text, because you know how busy Zach is, so I appreciate the courtesy. Well, well no. So I want to so all of a sudden, if go Zach goes to... silent, then you'll know that he's left. Well, but he, but you, we know. Before you leave in a hurry, I do yeah. want your take on John 15. We've done this I Am series, and we've had a few breaks with guest and and different things but look i'm telling you this is strength of my faith just because you know you hear these people who say well why do y'all talk about jesus all the time or or why do y'all keep focusing on the gospel and you hear these these types of statements in a lot of religious environments but the now i look back on that thinking that would be the last thing you would ever want to say because really you will spend the rest of your life on this earth getting to know who Jesus is as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. That, that's a, that, that does not stop. That is something that you will try to obtain and grasp till you see him again. I mean, it, it's, a, it's heavy. And these metaphors that he did use are, are vast in, in meaning and, and try, trying to grab a hold of what he was actually trying to say. So I'll read it. We're, yeah. we're doing I Am the Vine, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and Zach, give us your tape where you got to go. All right. So he says in John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes or cleans, cleanses, so that it will be even more fruitful. And I looked that word up for prune, and it does mean also cleansing, which is very interesting when you think about what Jesus offers us. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. That is a very profound statement. There's a lot of profound statements in this in this teaching, but that is one. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. He continues into this, saying, If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that your joy, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Now you look at those texts, what you just said. When you see them put into action, after you just heard what Jay said, you get the First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, last few words. Make sure that nobody pay, uh, pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other, to everyone else. So don't go around looking for people to say, well, you harass them. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Just think about the kind of mind that would be geared and told to do this. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Going back to your point, do not put out the Spirit's fire. You have help when you're baptized. God seals the deal by giving you His Spirit. You got to be born again of water and the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Well, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, you know, times have changed. Yeah, yeah. No. Test everything. Test everything. There's a lot of information coming and going. Test it. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. You're, you're watching the way you're operating. May God himself, the God of, of peace, the God of peace, there's Jesus, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. He will do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. Get this information here that we're reading in 1 Thessalonians. Yeah. 2,000 years yeah. from the time it was written, Al, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I mean, pretty so, amazing to say yeah. when you read these scriptures and you say, Look, people, you you you, you got to go through. Be careful what you listen to, what you observe, how you how you reply to people. Look, it, it has an impact on people. So, and if you you coming out of that, you need to be known so that people will recognize Jesus when they see him. We're there yeah. to present him. Yeah, so, you don't want you don't want to get too far away from the back. Jace, you know, forty days is a big marker in the Bible. You see 40-day fast. Remember, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. You see, that's kind of a marker. Uh, well, what about the 40 days Jesus hung around after he was resurrected? There you go. That's he spent a, 40 days giving many convincing proofs that he was alive. Mm -hmm. So that was a big one. And uh, we just celebrated Easter recently. So I guess our friends at 40 Days for Life have picked up on that concept of the importance of that as a biblical marker and have decided to use that as their marker. They have a 40 day peaceful vigils uh, where they have 40 day prayer uh, times where they go to abortion um, clinics that are still operating in States where abortion is legal. I've noticed they also have expanded uh, from reading their information to um, go into like, Walgreens and CVSs as well, because now this abortion pill, which we're about to have Sean Carney come on, I want to tell us about this. This is a new scourge in America. Now there's a pill um, that is being uh, made available uh, through these pharmacies to make it super easy for abortion. So we're going to talk about that. So their idea is you go and you try to, you know, they use weapons not of this world, and prayer is a big one of those weapons. And I, I love their concepts. It was prayer and fasting. The idea is we're going to fight with weapons not of this world. 
And so we're going to appeal to the Almighty. And so that's their idea. And it's working. They saved over 23,000 babies, converted over 250 abortion workers, helped close 132 abortion facilities in America. 45% of those were in liberal states. So uh, they've done good work. Uh, we support them. They've got a million volunteers in 1,500 cities. They're the largest pro-life organization in the world. And so they're working to end abortion, and uh, and we partner with them. So we want you to check out their locations, their podcast. Uh, they have a free magazine that's really good. And you can find that at 40daysforlife.com and stay updated on what's going on. 40 Days for Life, 40daysforlife.com. Check them out. I would say, I would say it's everything. I love the word abiding. I th- um, four things come to mind. Genesis 1 was the garden, which is initially the place where heaven and earth met. That's where God dwelled with his people. But we chose to eat God's fruit in God's garden, but without God, which cast us out of the garden. Then you move to Exodus 25, verse 8, when they built the mobile temple called a tabernacle. The purpose of the mobile temple, according to to the words of the Lord when he gave the instructions to build it, was so that he could dwell with his people. Move forward to uh, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 12. And he gives instruction to Solomon on building a permanent temple structure for the purpose of re, of dwelling with his people. Jesus comes on the scene in John chapter 2. He says, if you destroy this temple, I'm going to rebuild it in three days. They did destroy the temple. He did resurrect the temple in three days. Moved to the very end of the Bible, Revelation chapter 21. And this is what it says. You mentioned this a few weeks ago. He said he came into this new city. And he said, I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So the point is that God wants to dwell with his people. So I think this concept about abiding with God, I think it was in the narrative of Scripture from Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation. No, that's interesting because so Zach with the, the idea, I think, of a relationship, which I think is really interesting, especially when you get into this idea of a garden, which he talks about here. He kind of puts it in that vernacular when he's talking about the idea of fruit, plants, that type of thing. But he went to the idea of starting with garden and relationship, but then showing how that the people of God sort of had that, lost it over time but then it gained back through Christ, which is kind of an interesting take on that. I hadn't thought about it quite. Avoid like every kind of evil, he told the Thessalonians. Going back to what Zach said, all this information, Jesus is the centerpiece of it all now. Right. Your view of Jesus. Right. Well, when you add all the other I am's, you know, he said, I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. What am I missing? Bread of life. Yeah, I'm the bread of life. All these things, you know, that we do. Light of the world. Yeah, I'm the light of the world. All these things that we use, consume, uh, just to live. That must he, be translated down to us. Ex- exactly. I mean, you start seeing how vital this is to for a human being to claim this. There has to be a connection to him and God, which is kind of what he's saying here. He's making this example. Do you notice how many times he said, just like me and the father are, so I, so as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. He's showing this connection with him and the father and now with us in human beings. And you're like, is he? Is he saying what I think he's saying? So the necessary uh, implications and inferences of this are, some of them are quite frightening. I mean, this one where it says, if you don't remain in me, you can do nothing. So. And we have the, 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 the foundation. It says, back to the Thessalonian, test everything as you live your life. Test everything. You're like, well, that's that's weird, but it, it sure gave you a way a different way of looking at the world. Al, mm-hmm. test everything, hold on to the good, avoid the evil. 
Mm-hmm. That, was the, that was the purpose of Jesus saying, I am everything. Right. Just trust in me. I'll be there. Right. So he's, he's introducing this idea. I mean, I think most people, when they read this, they think of growth and change and you see these, uh, you know, because when you think of fruit, it's usually related in the Bible to some to character. I mean, you think Galatians five twenty two, the fruit of the spirit. Well, these are all character issues: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self control. And so, I, I I think that's normal, you know, to think that uh, the you know the fruit he had just talked about. Leaving in John 14, where he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. And remember, he starts promising this counselor, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Spirit. So, and then John 15, you know, all of a sudden he starts talking about, I'm the vine, and he wants me to bear fruit, you know, fruit that will last. But so I think you get into this religious debate here where you say, where people think, well, if I go out and bear a lot of fruit, I'll impress God. But he's actually not saying that. He's saying, if you're connected with me, fruit's coming. That's it. And th- that's a that seems like a small, subtle thing. But if you're, you can go out and do a lot of good things. That is a huge thing. It, it is the thing. Because once you lose connection with the vine, which is Jesus. Well, you, you've lost it. That's right. There's the life is what's producing the fruit. And the life that you're connected to is not you. It You're connected to the life source. So I really think it's a beautiful picture of the Trinity and our friendship, relationship, connection to And that's why he later goes on to say that statement about whatever you ask will be given. I mean, because that seems that doesn't seem to fit. But you got to remember you're 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 connected to the creator of the universe, the life source, the light source, the truth source. Well, you're your possibilities are now endless on what can be obtained. And look, you get you got a you got a marker of test everything. Test it. You'll see whether it's good or bad. Well, right. Exactly. You you funnel it through I mean this this metaphor is is really unique in in that line because you could actually fool yourself and try to do a lot of good things, a lot of fruitful things that we equate with, you know, because people say, well, I go to church and, you know, I pray twice a week or, you know, and I give money. and But you could be doing those things and be a million miles away from connection to God. And so what are you doing? You're, you're just doing things. It's, it's kind of a mechanical view of faith where you're doing things so that somehow you think you're going to please God. And he's saying just the opposite. I mean, this is so intimate. He gives of all the other illustrations he gives. I mean, this is probably the most intimate. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I agree. So recently we had our, uh, our good friend, Chad Robichaud, uh, on the podcast who, uh, Really is just a, a fine person, uh, a great brother in Christ, uh, a Louisiana fellow, Louisiana guy. Uh, found out that he grew up commercial fishing, a lot like we did, Jace. Uh, a lot of similar background. Obviously, he's a career military guy, special ops, just has given a lot for our country. And, you know, he talked to us a lot about how difficult uh, that is and just how it's impacted him and he, uh, he came out of all of his deployments like a lot of guys did with a lot of struggles in his life. And because of that, uh, he's learned a lot. And he's uh, started a foundation called the Mighty Oaks Foundation. And um, you know, he's given his life now not only in service to our country, but now in service to other service members. And, uh, and we love that about him. Uh, he has a fantastic uh, mission in life, and that, and now he's expanded that to not just military, but also first responders. Oh, yeah. He's a warrior for the Lord, for our country, and his actions has has just given proof of that. I mean, this guy yep. is amazing. 
So, so Mighty Oaks, uh, you know, one of the things they're, they're really working on is to eliminate suicide uh, in the military and first responders. Uh, the stats are super high. 22 uh, a day 20, by average, yeah, which and, is unfortunate. Yeah, and we had, you know, so many wars that have been protracted for so long. It's impacted, obviously, in a terrible way. Uh, divorce is super high, and so they really work on that. Uh, developing healthy family legacies is a big part of that, as well as just regular everyday trials. And so it costs about $3,500 uh, to get a, a service member or a first responder through this process. And so what we're trying to do is whatever we can give into this scholarship fund, whether it's $25, $50, $100, is going to help someone uh, get through this process. So we want you to consider giving to the scholarship fund by sponsoring a warrior it's going to help reach those goals to help them uh, with their effects of trauma uh, and leading to some restoration, some hope, and some purpose as they move forward. So we want you to donate now. Uh, you can go to mightyoaksprograms.org slash unashamed for more information to find out about the program. That's mightyoaksprograms.org slash unashamed. Even the smallest amount makes a big difference. So check them out. So I, I think we should talk about the growth aspect, and I think we should talk about how changes are made. I mean, and you know, I thought of an illustration where you kind of see this in marriage where, I mean, let's just say the wife says, you know, I just can't live with my husband anymore. You know, he, he has got to change. Well, they could go to a counselor, and she give a list of things that he needs to change. Well, let's say he goes and changes those things without changing the heart. Do you think it's going to last? I mean, you can comply. You can do things for a different reason. It doesn't mean you change your heart. But I guarantee you, if he doesn't change his heart and the relationship, then it's not going to end well. As soon as he feels like, oh, I've convinced her, that's why you see these people in these relationships, the uh, the the ne especially the negatives one with abuse and all, and you're like, why would you stay with a person who keeps beating you or lying to you? And uh, well, they convince them they're not going to do it anymore. They don't change their heart because you can't find a a way to change your heart without Christ being involved. Right. You just can't do it, not for long lasting results. Right. So I think I think that's kind of the point here, and, and it doesn't seem as scary when you look at it in that light. It, he's not saying, "Oh, if you don't follow me, you're you know I'm gonna cut you off and throw you in a fire and burn you." I remember reading this as a new Christian, and this this scared me because I was like, "Well, gee whiz, I hope I'm not one of those branches that get thrown in the pile and burned." Right. But he, he that wasn't his point. The the fact is, it's like when you read First Corinthians thirteen. Look, I would I would propose that one of the scariest passages in the whole Bible is the first three or four verses in First Corinthians thirteen. You're like, what are you talking about? It's the definition of love. It's beautiful. It's read in weddings. But when you go back and and read what Paul said, he's like, if I have these great powers, if I can fathom mysteries if i can speak in the tongues of angels he goes down this this list of all these powerful things he's like but i have love but i do don't not have love. if i don't have love i got nothing well that's scary to me <laughs> yeah because all these things we pursue to make ourselves feel good in in the faith what he was saying is if you are not connected if you're not spending as much time on the relationship and friendship of the Godhead, a focus on Jesus, and you're just doing spiritual things without being connected, you've missed it. Yeah, and I'd always, I'd heard lessons like, if you're not winning enough people, meaning bearing fruit, like the idea of that meaning that you're multiplying your faith into people, you're going to be burnt, thrown in the fire. You know, so there's different oh, I, ways. Look, I believe that. I, mean, I, I think we were in the school together, yeah. and I brought up that question to one of the uh, one of the instructors, and I think he called me a heretic because uh, <laughs> I was looking at <laughs> not it. not like, to be confused with a hairy tick, which yeah. is a whole other. Well, insult. and you know, he might have been a you know, I was young and immature, but because I was thinking, what is fruit? Fruit or results? This is how because it's all in how you look at it. You're like, well. If you're in Jesus, you're going to have resu results. 
What are results? Well, some of the results are other other people. And that was kind of the point I was making. But I was a, you know, just a withering barrage of you, you've missed the point. And, and actually, the instructor was right. The, this is God using us, his life source, his Holy Spirit inspiring us. Yes, there are people going to come to Christ because of your your witness, but it isn't about you. And that's the whole point of this right here. I mean, it is a scary thing to think about people that are outside of Jesus. You're not connected to Jesus, but it's not as, as scary as what we do with like a Christmas tree or whatever. You know, this tree's alive, and then we take it, cut it down, and make it look more spectacular than it ever did. We got lights on it and people. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. We got candy hanging on it. But what happens as a result from it being separated from the life source? No, it's At some point, because I collect them and I use them for places in ponds for crappie together. But when you look at it, it looks horrible because it, lo- it it dies. Yeah. You can make it look as spectacular in the short term. And I think that's the same kind of And concept. it gets so dry that, I mean, you walk by and what, all it takes is one spark and that thing oh, will go just... up like a <laughs> <laughs> look like Christmas vacation. So, Jace, I was thinking about in Mark 11, back when we studied Mark, to your point, about what this looks like scripturally. Because remember when Jesus is going into the city and he does the triumphal entry in Mark 11, and he goes and he's he's about to clear the temple, and this weird little thing happens, but it really fits in the context of John 15. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. So in verse 13, seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples heard him say it. It was always happened there. And then they go in and then he clears the temple. This was a weird story. And then the chief of priests were trying to kill him. And the next morning, in verse 20, as they went along, he saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. And so it's an odd story unless you put it in the context of what was happening with this idea of the rejection of Jesus in Jerusalem as he's coming in. And so I think it's obvious the picture is, is the root, Jesus, the branch, all those metaphors from the Old Testament and all those prophecies of who he was, he's being rejected. And he's shown him this picture that if you reject me, you die. And that's exactly what happens in, in the context of that. So he even gives them this little picture of when you reject me, you're rejecting the very way you have to salvation. And so I think that was the purpose of that little fig tree instance. Oh, I, I have no doubt. I think that's the point of John 15. I thought the same thing. I actually looked up the fruit, the most common fruits used in the Bible, which I was surprised at number one. You know what the number one fruit is? In the Bible? Yeah. It wasn't figs? Figs was second. Uh, hmm. Grapes. Oh, yeah, grapes. Yeah, that yeah makes sense. which makes sense. I mean, but... It it, because I was I was enamored with this idea. I was like, what 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 is he? It, and even just the pruning process, you you read that, you're like, what? Because when you see that happening, it looks brutal. You're like, it looks like when when someone is pruning grapes, or because I was looking at all the images, you're like, why why would why would you do that? I mean, it looks horrific. To you're like that thing will never survive survive that. So when you put that in your real lives and the pain that we have to go through, the difficulties, the challenges, well, then it starts making sense. This is not about me trying to impress God. That's never going to happen with whatever fruit I come up with. You know, I can't even, we can't do that. But he's saying, he's not saying that this is not going to be difficult. And this is a trust thing. That's why it's not as scary when he gets down and he he makes that statement about, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. So he talks about remaining in him. He talks about difficulty that seems painful and doesn't make sense. But we all know what happens when, you know, grape bushes are pruned. 
they come back that much stronger. Mm -hmm. And that's why I went the growth area because it's hard. It's not hard. It's impossible. It's impossible to see anything grow just with your eyes. I mean, you think about a tree during the winter. You're like, well, it's dead. No, it looks dead, but actually it's still growing. But it's just not a ple it's right. not a pleasant time. It illustrates life itself. Cause I, I mean, look, I when I first became a Christian, I was on fire. And what I realized is at some point, it's like, yeah, but you have normal life. I had a wife. I had all these things happen, and I was just so into just the fruit. And I mean that we said like people coming and all this. You know, I kind of started looking up and saying, but well, the rest of my life's kind of falling apart here because I'm never here. <laughs> you know, so what I'm saying is I was more obsessed with just doing the actual acts and doing the things. And I was forgetting the character that God had along with it. And I was trying to bypass the difficulty because being married is hard. You know, raising kids is hard. All these things are hard. Well, in my mind, I was like, well, I'm doing this you know, bringing people to the Lord. I don't have time for this, but deep down, I didn't want the difficulty. It was it was more fun just to be free out there and justify, you know, staying away from the harder parts of life. And so then some pruning had to happen. You know, I realized that when you make a commitment, you know, with your wife and to your kid, this is just as important, if not more, than all these good things I, I was trying to do, you know. Right. And I, I think the Lord does that and reveals his character to you and, and you put things in perspective. But that was part of having a relationship with God and understanding these things. No, and that's, and of course, I think that was, again, back to that Mark 11 text that I read, because Jesus, you said, well, well, wait a minute, that's not fair to the fig tree because it was out of season, right? I mean, it had the leaves on it, but... It wasn't season for figs, so Jesus shouldn't have cursed that tree because, you know, it just needed to wait on it. But Jesus knew that tree looked like it would bear fruit, but it wasn't going to bear fruit. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. the point is he was making the point that these Jewish leaders, the ones who they looked like they had it going on, but they didn't trust in him. And that's yep. about him knowing the heart. It's kind of like what Willie was on the podcast uh, uh, recently, and he, we didn't talk about it on the podcast, but he was talking to dad about he has this grove of Mayhaw trees, and they're beautiful. They look way better than your trees, dad, or mm -hmm. the trees over here in the swamp. I mean, they are beautiful. He's got the little structures on them, and they've grown up. I've never seen a Mayhaw tree that looks so pretty. When you get the chicken checking on it, no fruit. No fruit. And they've been in, they've been there for years now, and they haven't borne one single Mayhaw tree. And it's been a mystery, but an old timer came through and said, oh, I see your problem right now. And Will was like, what is that? Now it's been confirmed by not just an old timer, but all these people he's hired to come look at it. It's because there are cedar trees in the vicinity. And apparently if a cedar tree is within a certain amount of distance from a fruit tree, it won't bear fruit. Because of their two tox, their toxins. Now provable. there's a lot of spiritual implications. Oh, I thought that. about that. There's yeah. like you know, there's this. It, it's like you trying to have being connected to Jesus in a worldly environment. Yeah, it's not going to work. Not going to work. You know, it's the same. It, it's like the people who come to Christ and they're like, okay, so now what are the rules? Because you know, th that's the number one, <laughs> number one. Maybe not that exact question, but it always comes back to that. What What do I have to do? It's a horrible question because you're still looking at it like I'm going to do the least amount of possible to to get, have God's favor. Nothing you do is going to create God's favor. This is about his favor. That That's why when he said greater love has no one than this, you know, he goes on to say that uh, that he laid down his life for his friends. Well, who's going to be lining up to do that? You know, come to Christ, and you may have an opportunity to lay your, down your life for your friends. Like, well, I'm not sure I want to sign up for this. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That that just went. This is crazy. I'm not doing this. But he goes on to say his point, which is why we're making a big deal about change and growth. Is he says in verse 16, "You did not choose me," but we all want to. We all want to believe that. We we want to think that based on my choices 
that I have won God's favor. I mean, look, I'm all for people making good choices. That That's not the point. But because you make good choices does not mean all of a sudden you've earned something before God. Because he then says this, but I chose you. This is about your perspective on who is the tree. <laughs> it's not you. I mean, you look up and you're like incapable of producing fruit because you're right next to a cedar tree. I mean, That's it's right. the same concept. He's the tree. I'm just fortunate to be a part of it. And he said, come on in. We're all grafted into his tree. That's the only way we're, we're getting there. So then he says, and appointed you to go and bear fruit. But here's the distinguishing factor and what, why we're making a big deal of this. Because he wants, and what only matters, is fruit that will last. If you're just out here trying to get fruit on this earth, temporary fruit there's a million and one ways to do it you know i mean you can have money or power or success or relationships or that hot girl you saw in school or whatever but it's not gonna last right it's all temporary and that's what he's providing so it's he's basically saying i am the tree of life that's right I mean, you want life, you want meaning, you want things that will last, that's beyond the temporary satisfaction. You realize that I chose you. Yeah. And you're fortunate to be a part of this. And to have knowledge. Good point. Because Willie had the best of intentions by building a beautiful grove of mayhaw trees, but what he didn't have was the knowledge that if you did it within a certain proximity of this danger – that you'd never bear fruit, but he didn't know. And so that's why you have to have connection to someone who knows. Well, Willie had dinner with me the other day. Here it is, May, which uh, nearly May. Here's April. We're in April. The end of this month, the Mayhaws, they're already turning. Yep. But Willie looked at them just loaded. I had three trees, four or five trees out there. Your own gnarly looking trees. Gnarly. <laughs> I dug them up out in the woods and put put them in my yard. That's right. And they're and there they are, Baron. They're there. Right so environment. Re- and so you re- look around, it's so low the ground in there. But you know, not what? a cedar within five miles. That's of the exactly day. right. What I, well, here's what I appreciated about Willie's humility. He said, "Dad, I'll be down. I want you to show me how to make that jelly." Yeah. So it's <laughs> really the important part here. Why you do what you do is. Jesus is making that a very important fact. Yep. You're you're never going to have love, joy, peace without humility. Yep. And because what what is that without humility? It's pride or fear. You you can do a lot of great things and you can pull it off out of pride and fear, but it's not going to last. Yep. Yep. Humility is what God is after because He's supplying the power and the life source. That's what makes the difference. All right, so we'll talk a little bit more about this in overtime. BlazeTV.com slash unashamed if you want to follow us over. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.